Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. We're still here. Yep. I'm Robert. So we're going to meander to a couple other things? A couple or? other things I here. I mean, it is an election year. <clears throat> uh, yeah. As if we didn't know. <laughs> you know? This is true. Yeah. Um, the uh, Maybe just a few little quick more mm -hmm. things from Sullivan Chamber and City Council maybe last night. Mm -hmm. One thing it was this sort of a, really probably the single most annoying oh. city council mm. order I have seen all yeah. year mm. was one uh, that was introduced several weeks ago. Maybe it was actually even, was it at the summer meeting? I think, I might think have been so. The it seems okay. to have been there a lot. So it was yeah. Councillor Zondervan, and it was basically demanding that the city of Cambridge issue an apology to mm. the proprietors of this Upper, Upper West, West um, you know, who are also applying apparently for a package store license up on, I think, Cedar Street. Whatever now, you know. And now the proprietors, who shall not be named, haha, uh, they you know they were city council candidates already. Both of them, right? Oh yeah, and they're just using it to sort of they they go to public meetings. They're always videotaping what, 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 them. Didn't and, they have an, a, another issue that they were fighting about a year ago, or or <coughs> questioning something about another open issue? Meeting? No, open every meeting. imaginable issue. No, no, but something about yeah. open meeting it had nothing to do with this particular one about the licensing, was it? Or Even, was it? Um, this would, I think, that if I'm not mistaken, that right now there was one thing about the fact that they got nailed for having some open flames. Uh, but they the were not even real flames. I mean, no, no, they were real flames. But the thing oh. is, is that uh, the oh. the claim was it said, but there's nothing on the books that says that that's illegal. Oh, right. Right. It was just the fire department just arbitrarily made it up. But right? then it became about the language right. and threats and this and that. Right. And, but and, but yeah. the thing is, that's that's sort of been the ongoing problem ever right. since this dynamic duo, right. duo entered the scene. Right. Right. You know, they're nothing but accusations and harassment, really, quite honestly, of people in multiple departments in the city. So they have not made yeah. too many friends. Yeah. But now the thing is, OK, because they have not made too many friends, um, the thing is, they're now claiming that uh, the license commission is basically targeting them. Um, you know, I don't think that's really true. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, so Councilor Zondervan's order basically wanted to it was demanding the city should drop all charges against them as and apologize as, and apologize to them as our as our very capable city solicitor Nancy Blow very clearly pointed out last night. There are no charges against them. Right. And there never were any charges against them. And in them, fact, they are suing three different people. The real right. issue yeah. is that they are suing, suing the, members the members of the, of the license, license Commission. Which I didn't realize was the Fire Commissioner? It's the, the, police it's commissioner, the Fire Commissioner, the Police Commissioner, and then, commissioner, and then, and then, then Nicole, Nicole. Nicole. Ferrer, yeah. who is the Executive Director of the Therefore, license commission. ongoing litigation. So they, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're being accused of things. And as the solicitor says, these are simply allegations, Counselor, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so you want to, and, and the thing is, is that if you have ongoing uh, litigation for the city, I mean, the silliness of this is just profound. The notion that the, the city council should, in a public way, make an apology to a group that's suing yeah. the city yeah. in the middle of the lawsuits, which basically is then a part but, of the public but record. But in the policy, did, 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 did Councillor Zondervan know that they were, there were suits against? I, it seemed like I think he was that. going on really wrong information, yeah. some of I mean, which he may have got or some he may that. have read yeah. in a local blog somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is that, uh, you know, the, the, the um, you know, these, as, as Nancy said, these are allegations only, you know, mm -hmm. and if you want to talk about it all, you really should do it in executive session. Oh, right. And the thing is, if there is ongoing, ongoing. litigation for yeah. the city council to vote to say, oh, we're so sorry, we're terrible, terrible people. Or do you even discuss If that doesn't it, affect do the it. litigation, I right. don't know what so would. Nothing could be done publicly. Right. You couldn't do it in an you open know, session. And furthermore, this, yeah. the license commission has jurisdiction over certain things. And the city council has jurisdiction over certain things. And the, the city council can't just direct the license commission to do this or that, you know. I mean, it's one thing if you if you pass an ordinance and then they're charged with enforcing an ordinance. Yeah. That's a different matter. But you can't just sort of say, well, we don't like a cut of your jib, license commissioners. Yeah. We demand that you apologize to these people or we're going to get really mad and stamp our feet. Yeah. So so anyway, it was so this was introduced. There were two uh, orders related to that. Well, there was there was an order the introduced at the, the summer meeting, and then no, because the night. summer right, but the summer meeting uh, oh it was order, unfinished business. But what happened right, at the yeah. summer meeting? And people said, well, look, if you're also at the simultaneously arguing about what is the meets and bounds of mm -hmm. license commission's jurisdiction to mm -hmm. to to decide on matters, 
you know, and, and even though the city solicitor has opined on this so many times now that, mm -hmm. that it really should be known, um, but they said, well, we should have a, a hearing or something basically to get information back about exactly what the, mm -hmm. uh, what the limits are. Totally reasonable request, quite honestly, even though, in fact, all the facts are available to anybody who would look for them. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing is, so there were actually two items left. One was the order from Zondervan, right. the other one was the late order from the summer meeting, I think came from Toomey or something, um, about, you know, just, you know, explaining things, right? Oh, he charter so, right. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah so, right. so they were both made subject yeah. to the charter, right? And then council reconvened in September. They came back and... The ninth, uh, last week. Right. And the thing is, but then everything was wacky last oh, week. Oh, right. So because that all of all the got, hearings, all so the they, got pushed they to, put everything right. on unfinished business, so then right. finally they got to it. Okay, so So, so okay. they were getting, you know, back and forth, back and forth. I, you know, the smartest person in the room was Nancy Gloa, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and she pretty much read the riot act. And Zondervan, I guess mm -hmm. to his credit, said, well, you know, said, what do you think about that, Councilor Zondervan? Oh, yeah. He said, well, I guess, I guess I... this pretty much defines getting the book thrown at you. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> And it did. Yeah. He, the book got thrown out. Yeah. I mean, it's so totally wrong. It's yeah. a comic. comic. Yeah. But the thing is, is that, you know, then they said, well, what, maybe we should, uh, you know, do something with this. And then I th forget, was it Councillor Toomey or somebody finally said, look, I moved the question. You know, this was a council order mm. asking the city to do this. We can talk about this. We can mm -hmm. refer to the law Wasn't department. Wasn't talk about a round table? Or no, they that... can refer to a round table. They yeah. can do this. Or we can simply dispose of it. Mm -hmm. So they moved the question, and it was one counselor in favor, Zondervan. Yeah. One present. One present, Dennis Jan Carlone. And no, no, Jan Devereaux. <clears throat> uh, on that one, no, yeah. it was you Dennis sure Carlone. That? Yes. Oh, yeah. you're right. It was right. something else. Yeah, and then, right. And then seven counselors saying, get mm -hmm. it out of here. Right. And, they, and right. you know, for various reasons, maybe, maybe right. they know the individuals, but more, most significantly, it's simply because they understood this is not really something that should probably be before the council. And, and that, or as an order, it should have been rejected flat out. Right so what the happened start. to the other one, the other order about the license commission? Well, I mean, that, that I but think didn't they... didn't vote on that? They, yeah, they said that's fine. Because so it, is that going to be a round table? They, they or will just at get, some point schedule a round okay. table and they will talk about this. All right, this. but nothing I mean, the truth is, I mean, yeah. there are questions about... You yeah, know, like the, who's yours? Right, the, I mean, the city, yeah. the city of Cambridge had, uh, and the license commission decided, with the blessing of the council, Going back into the 80s, they had things mm. like liquor license caps in certain oh, right. areas. Yeah. Um, they had policies that basically drove the, the cost of a liquor license up through the yeah. roof eventually. Which is crazy now, because look right. at it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, just like taxi cab medallions right. were going through the roof. And then Uber came along and yeah. gutted go. the industry. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, some counselors advocated for loosening things up to allow for non transferable licenses. I so think it was the, the council that? That they that were doing that, it? and they started. But now, but I thought some well, councils are complaining now that the people no, are stuck no, with no, these. No, no, okay, what so happened was what happened. is that so, you know, if I may give a a, a, a slight detail wrong here or two, All but right. the truth is, is that what they did was they were issuing these non so so called non transferable licenses, no fee license. I think it was a fee, but it was not. It you wasn't something sale, they were not you can't benefit from it. And then somebody must have brought it to in front of a court or, yeah, or a regulatory right. body and they said well no actually they, they can all be bought and sold and they said uh oh huh. we have a problem so they went yeah. and readjusted things oh, I see. and i think the license commission and nicole morati for in particular basically has been updating and bringing into the compliance mm. with with state standards uh, mm -hmm. all the all the things that the license commission do she's been doing a great job honestly mm. she deserves awards mm. Actually, she did receive some awards. Okay. Um, and the thing is, is that, but what it means is that uh, if you if you overpaid for a liquor license, maybe you kind of are going to have to eat that one too, because now it's not worth much more but than. But was that else. something the city made it, or are they going by state guidelines? <clears throat> I, I don't. Right quite... now, I mean, if you want a license, you basically say, well, just I just you just need to prove a quote public need. But but how did that change? Who 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 made that official? Was it a state? It was. I think the this the is the, that true across the, the state? The caps that city of Cambridge had instituted were probably a little questionable throughout, but nobody ever questioned it. But it wasn't just Cambridge. I've heard this was happening other places. Right, like over in Boston. I mean, Doyle's my favorite watering hole in Boston. Well, that, just lost yeah, he, its, they he, sold he its didn't license lose it. to He Davio's. sold it because they want to get out of the I know, business. I know. It breaks my Half heart. Half a million dollars. I, I was just there on I Sunday know, night for I the know. last, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so so that's still going so, on, right? So, so the thing is, is that the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, and the executive director are still under threat of lawsuit from these two characters, uh, and you know, ultimately, I'm, I'm it, probably not a whole lot will come of it. But the point is, is that you know they are city employees and they are basically under threat of litigation from some unhappy okay, people but, and that's all right just back up this but it's, it's so totally out of the pr the okay. the realm of city council business as to be ridiculous back up for a second here now if doyle sold his that means in boston you can still sell your license and we can't do it you in know cambridge? every city has its Why own can't regulations the, can the cambridge person sell it to a boston entity no oh no well, then something's uh, wrong with all of that. And remember yeah. also, okay. and I, again, I did have to look this mm -hmm. up, but Boston is actually special uh, in the state. It has, there are certain laws that work there that are valid okay. there that do not apply for all the other cities and towns. In yeah. Now you've got me curious about what other towns yeah. are doing, because yeah. it does seem unfair then if, if these people are stuck with these licenses. But. Um, it's true. But the thing is, that's not the issue with the Upper no, West. No, no, that's all, a separate issue. It's a totally separate, separate issue. Separate, yeah. separate. Okay. You know, all so, right, what um, else? I'm sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> actually, w one thing, maybe not a whole lot to say mm. about it, but... Um, it was promised that the advocates for municipal broadband were going to bring a petition oh. before the council, which mm -hmm. they delivered to the council. Uh, my name's on it. Right. Just because on it's only looking to have a, another... A feasibility. feasibility yeah. so. Right. And I, I think that's a fine idea. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, so the, you know, the idea is, do you, should, you, should this be a one-horse town where you have to go to Comcast or nobody... Yeah, no. Or, and it's not quite that way because there's no. groups like Starry who. Yeah, doing but that's rooftop. very questionable. You have to have certain. Sight yeah, lines I mean, so and, so yeah. there's things rolling out. It um, really is the only game in town. But it is basically the only game yeah. in town, um, you know. So so the idea would be should the city invest in municipal broadband, mm -hmm. and you know I think it's a nice ideal. You know I don't. Yeah. I think if you ask almost anybody, say, hey, wouldn't you like to have an option that you could get? Well, Concord this? has it, Longmont, yeah. Colorado, whatever. But right. There, you have to look at a lot of the details. It is attractive. Yeah. If you own your own utility electric company, it helps, which is yeah. true in Concord. Right. Right. And also, this is not say anything about cable television. So exactly. just remember that right. you'd still have to have a cable TV subscription, right. and you'd probably still have to go to Comcast. Right. So. I mean, everything is evolving. It's great for in people who just want to stream and all that. I'm just yeah. saying there's a lot of issues here, but That's I still right. think a feasibility study would be good. I think it's a good yeah. study, but the, the the one aspect of the feasibility that I would really like to understand, which maybe the study can't even address, is the future. So the thing, right. is, and it's, it's, it's always, this has always yeah. been my concern, is that yeah, you're right. So you say, you say, well, like, you know, yeah. uh, so Comcast has this, mm -hmm. you know, this uh, coaxial cable scattered all over the city, right. feeding into every home. So, right. in theory, if you wanted to build out a municipal broadband network, you have to go and build out your own network. Now, it doesn't have to be done with the same technology. It could be done with well, the, but the city repeaters. uses a fiber optic thing. <coughs> you could do fiber optic. Yeah. You could do a combination of things. That's what Verizon does, but they right. won't even touch Cambridge. Right, because though they are, yeah. they are yeah. doing FiOS in Boston. I and know, they, and after right. years of not having that's that, they, true. So who knows? Phasing it that's in true. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So the thing is, is the, the big, my biggest concern would be because you know, as I watch these mm -hmm. little extra transmitter yeah. receiver things from what's called Next G or something, oh. being put on top of telephone poles. You mean the five G network? Five, I, whatever it is. Whatever but the thing is, is, yeah. is they it was even a city China's council doing it. Um, or uh, <laughs> hearing about this. Oh yeah. And when I look at that, and I say yeah. to myself, okay, so Where there's new technologies right. being deployed. Wireless and, and if these now. things yes. actually have a, a very uh, serious mm -hmm. amount of broadband capability, it's going to is be it the possible that thing. if the yeah. city were to be start building out yeah. some technology, yeah. by the by the time they finish building the network, is two That's weeks right. later, it's changed. is it obsolete? Right. You know. Yeah. So I, I my biggest concern has just been the financial exposure. If you're going to basically mm -hmm. take taxpayer money or mm -hmm. a combination of taxpayer money and a private a a separate entity that gets created to, you know um you know well, they separate would basically from the city. run it they wouldn't necessarily pay for it they, right you would pay them to manage it because the city doesn't want to get involved right. in selling <clears throat> subscriptions and all that but right. the city would be responsible for the infrastructure I think. and that's where and that's there's a big a, deal you yeah. know and i've heard some yeah. estimates in the order of 180 million dollars well that's what the broadband task force came right up with. Exactly. that was three years ago yeah so it could right? be more so, now right or less because maybe there's well, different technology. That's true. You know? But that's, so that, that's then maybe it's useful. I mean, I, I, think, I think it's a good. The big thing gripe to study. is that people don't like the fact that our current city manager has basically put his foot down on it. 
where I, apparently they're referring to the last right. one. But Robert, what I would, um, but I would say to that who, who is was open that, to it. You know, again, I'm not going to put words in Bob Healy's mouth but or that's Richie Rossi's you, mouth yeah. or Louis De Pasquale, but. Well, All was. three of these city managers, and Lisa Peterson briefly when she was there mm -hmm. as an acting city manager, I think all come from the point of view that, you know, that it's putting the city at financial risk is not mm. good in terms of bond ratings and the ability to finance other projects. Mm. So they tend to be very cool to something that's going to do that. Even spinning off the Cambridge Health Alliance mm. and make it, you know, it used to be the city hospital. It was part of the yeah. city budget. Yeah. And it was could really fluctuate. And it was in yeah. a time where mm. healthcare costs were changing dr yeah. drastically. And it was, could have been a real albatross around the neck of the city. So they spun it off, made it an independent authority, with where the city has a lot of control of it still. Mm -hmm. You know, but the thing is, this way it doesn't have the financial exposure. Yeah. So I don't, just, I just don't see any of the city managers up to this point wanting to embrace something that puts the city in yeah. some sort of financial risk. Now, if you can show a feasibility study that says, hey, come on, this is like in like Flint, this will be great. Yeah, but who does if, wouldn't that be an outside person to be objective? Well, if you basically partnered yeah. up with some other entity that was willing to do some of the infrastructure rollout but doing it in partnership with yeah, the city. Yeah, but then they're going to be, how impartial is that? You need a really impartial person to say this could work. This well, could so work. that's, it's all about a matter of how you write the contract. Right? True. Or the, you know? what is it, not RIP. Right. The, so if the, the majority the of the board must be appointed RIP. by the city manager or yeah. something like that, right? All they right. need to do that. So anyway, um, there was some silliness because it was only the names and they hadn't put in their address yeah. and so it wasn't a proper petition. But the truth is, is it's not a zoning petition. It's right. not a zor an ordinance. Yeah. It's simply a request. Yeah. So I don't know why they would get so hot and bothered about whether uh, people put their address. Yeah, seriously. Because all it is is just a bunch of people saying, hey, come on, Louie, let's do something here, will you? You know? Yep. And Louis' response up to this point is to create, let's all point the Digital Equity Access And you say that did happen? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're still actually taking applicants for it. Really? Uh, you know, and so if the issue is just giving people people that want access, this on that, hopefully? Probably. But, the, you know, there are, there are people who are, um, well, anyway, so that, that's, that if, the, if the issue is getting access for people who can't afford the broadband, whatever, then I think that committee is primarily addressing that. But the thing it's a much bigger issue, which is what if you could afford it, but you just want something better or a little bit less expensive oh, with yeah, better well, options. Can I bring something up? Yes, because that was brought up by Christopher. He, he testified and he said, some people who can't afford are paying 30% of their blah, blah, blah. They're paying $300 a month. And I'm thinking, they're probably getting cable television. Yeah. You, they're not just getting broad, you know. Broadband's uh, not going to cost you $300 And a month. also, I haven't had a real good response by, is no one using the Comcast? Internet Essentials program for ten dollars a month. Is, <coughs> I mean, I'm really, sure is it very ways. odorous to have to qualify for that? Well, you know, it one seems of the, to me that that they do have this. I have program. to say, you know, as a one-time you know? Comcast customer who yeah. then was a non-Comcast right. customer who is now a Comcast customer. Yeah. I remember that if you wanted to just get the basic, the most basic well, cable TV, package for not, TV, but but the point is, is that. It's this is Com just internet. Comcast's business model yeah. is to not let people know about the cheap options very much. Yeah. Well, this isn't a cheap, you have to qualify. It's right. a low income and it's just internet. It's not right. cable TV. Right. But still, I'm but just if saying, they can, If they can right. get you on the hook That's for something right. more expensive, they've no, always no. tried to do that. You're right. I mean, you, Up to and including right. for t those of us who got, watch television. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, they would actually take the things yeah. I liked off of the basic package, put it into the higher tier. Right. Because See, oh, you need that. Yeah. So, the, so if you wanted to watch Twilight Zone episodes, you you can't oh. get it out of the basics anymore. You know, you have to get the DVD, Robert. Right. Yeah. All no. right. Well, okay. You're right about that. And yeah. um, so anyway, so so whether so now it's basically it's nothing more than a request. There, there are I think probably the majority of city councilors, and the majority of a future city council probably would like. Yes. more movement on this yeah so they want more options they don't want to see yeah. them so my guess yeah. is that the city manager mm -hmm. is going to uh, have to do can't, something. can't yeah. forever just kick the can down right. the road if they can definitively make the case why this is just going to be financial ruin to do it yeah then i think the council will be receptive but yeah. the thing is at some point louis has got to either move on it mm -hmm. or make that case and yeah. make it with great clarity right right, right. so that's got to come right 
Now, there's another thing that's happening now. In fact, happening right now, I might add, oh, too. Oh, a hearing? So, I mean, no, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. This is not, this is politics now. Yeah, I know. Lord Tom, okay, there's, so, there's, a, there's a forum going on. Right, so there is actually a candidate forum happening in the Ward Where's 6. Where's Ward 6? I'm in Ward 6. Oh, you're, is yeah. that Mid-Cambridge? That's Mid-Cambridge. But that's not the, that's not, that's, there's a Mid-Cambridge one going on later in the month. That's right, the Mid-Cambridge Neighborhood Association, okay. which is actually, I strongly recommend that one. That's I've a, gone to that. It used to be it's, over it's, on it's, uh, it's Mass Ave. Now it's going to be in the they, cafeteria. They, it's done by tables, and, and I actually of, like that. Yeah, yeah, I can't go to that you, one. It's a lot more interactive. Right. You can yeah. interact with the individual counselors. Right. They but tonight's is at the too. main library. Why is right. it five and seven? They divided. Because they decided, oh, so many candidates. I think, well, they're right? 22 candidates. Yeah. I don't know if they're all going, but they decided to split them into two panels. Just like at the Porter Square group, they've been known to split them into two and three yeah. panels, I think, last time. Rather uh, than putting, you know, you don't want to have 24 people live. Well, up. ABC did. Oh, because they didn't have 24, they had 18. Right. And minus a couple counselors is, who were at a yeah, meeting. Yeah, and even 18 is just a lot yeah. to have lined up like a beauty pageant there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so so they, anyway, they made a decision to actually do it. So, okay. So let me see. What, what Are you going to go to that? You're going to run over there? No, no. Well, honestly, yeah. I may be a member of the Ward 6 Democratic City yeah. Committee, but I despise it. Oh. I really do. The, the chair is a lunatic. You know, the, everybody associated with is lunatics. Oh. But the thing is, is sometimes... <laughs> you're, you're really, I'm you're sorry. really I mean, cementing I, your I, I got to say it, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, I feel shame to be a part of this group. But the thing is, is that, <laughs> is that, that they, that doesn't mean they can't put on a good forum. They yeah. might actually ask good questions. They might get good participation. So well, knock them I wonder if CCTV is it. televising, because they did televise. They may, they, yeah. They Facebook Live, yeah, the ABC one. I think one. they may. So those, oh, those videos okay. may be available. So it's like five. You I walk think, out the door. Five and seven. Five I've and got the right here if yeah. you want to go to this for yeah. a minute. Your civic yeah. calendar. <clears throat> yeah, we could do that a little bit right here. Yeah. There here we go. you go. Yeah. So right. there's Ward so, Six City Council candidates for so that five o'clock and seven o'clock. Yeah. And then you've got a also tonight a planning board meeting. Yeah. Anything with yet big another, on that? Uh, that? Yet another Charles River Remedies if they want to open up another pot shop oh. on Church Street and Harvard Square. Oh dear. Okay. I tell you, there's a lot of pot there going we go. down. Absolutely. Wait, but that sounds like that's medical. Um, um, yeah, yeah, building to a retail. Right. Yeah. But, but but the thing is is retail oh reach converted store. to a, oh yeah, yeah the yeah, truth yeah, is yeah. they're all going to go You're recreational right. sooner or later right. anyway okay right um and the thing is is in the coming days i don't know if we have them all up there but there's yeah. going to be more candidate forums coming up well, as well i don't see any um, right. the, the thing is they start mm. happening the bow tie ride is this yeah i can't right? go to that um, right um but i think I I, I have here we go idea. here's some oh the climate, climate action coalition time that's very Topical. That's next Wednesday, uh, September twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. I can't right? go I to think that in either. October is when the Porter Square group, the Cambridge Port yep. group, mid Cambridge. Here you go. Group. You so, got them right here. So All right. you know, we can Ward Six will do a school committee one as Thursday, well. Thursday, October third is the the central uh, is the candidates uh, right. school and, candidates, and that's actually from the old Cambridge Teachers Union. So yeah, that that's a good be, one. I've gone to that, that before. One. Oh, and that's at Central Square. And I got Square. some information about that. I haven't yet posted. Oh, okay. I'll be doing more and here we go. Ward Six again. School committee. School oh, school committee. committee. Right. So anyway, okay. so there are a few others here as well. All but, right. But, you know, okay. enough. The, the, um, uh, but the point is, they've actually had some. So there was an ABC one, right? Yes, and I went to that. <laughs> they've already um, made their endorsements, by the way. Like, they is it, did? Yeah, they, they were announced today. And the, you oh. know, it was basically, look. Where did you get it? See it? Uh, like it was on, on, it was on the internet. Oh, Basic, basically, basically, here, here's how the endorsements work. Okay. Were you in support of the overlay? Okay, you got your endorsement. Mm. Were you opposed to the overlay? You, did. you don't get our endorsement. Yeah. So they've basically become so, a one issue, you know, a one trick yeah. pony. Well, they never lied about it. That was their. Well, thing. no, they started yeah. out promoting housing generally mm. and transit oriented development well. in very particular, but then they put all their eggs in the overlay basket. And well, it was the best thing going. Kind of met their needs. It I was the only thing that. going. I know. And, so. and I think to the, you know, and I would fault the community development department and the Envision Cambridge process for that. Mm. You know, mm. um, and in fact, it's actually part of the rhetoric I really find deplorable is the people saying like, well, the only piece of housing they had before them and then they and they chose to table it. How terrible. Well, maybe the bigger question is why was there only one proposal? Why was there only one idea being floated to the, and, the, and every, all else excluded? I think that's a kind of an interesting Well, indictment. it was the newest idea. I guess there have been other ideas. Yeah. There are inclusionary. I mean, yeah. 
But yeah. the thing is, is there actually are some people working on some, I think, better ideas. So maybe they can might... incorporate that into this? And right. I mean, it. for example, how would people feel about producing more units than the overlay allegedly would have produced in Central Square by simply allowing the buildings to, to house those people happen? How about having uh, something like well, that? Well, I don't understand. Over... That's happening now. What do you mean? People don't Mass want any more made... tall buildings, though. Is that really true? I don't well, know. Well, but that you that's already have. Don't you think Central Square has already gotten a lot of units? It's gotten a lot of units. And okay, it, and so the thing is, you... is, but if you ask people right now, yeah. would you be okay with another what about, building of some But what about North Cambridge tall building? I agree. Okay, but isn't that partly what the affordable housing overlay was getting at? Um, or, do you object to the whole zoning no, issue of this? No, I just would like to see housing aspects. So the thing is, if okay. you let's say you rezone things down around. The area like in the vicinity of what they call the Boynton Yards. So this is over in the summer Cambridge Somerville border. There used to be a lot of junkyards. Everything is very low scale over there. Boynton, huh? Where is this? Getting heading over toward Union Square. Okay, right? yeah, if where the green line's gonna said, go through. We, we but that's have, already have you been over there? They're building stuff there. <clears throat> They're building some things there, but there's actually a tremendous amount of, of space that is uh, unbuilt. I think and a unproposed. lot of that's been bought up and I think it's And they're building up to the confines of existing zoning limits too. But the thing is, is that you could modify zoning there, and I will do the math for you and tell you, you will produce more housing and even more affordable housing units if you did that and pursued that than anything that they Okay, but is that property affordable to the people that could buy it? Um, the thing is, is people who would be developing it for housing generally with a very significant, yeah. and even, you know, a super inclusionary component for these. Oh, so we're talking about units. private developers and then yes. throw out some inclusion. All right, so you're really lot, though, much more of a proponent of inclusionary zoning and than 100% yeah, oh, affordable. By far. And no, you'll, see, produce, I, well, you'll right. produce far more units and you'll also be responding to the, the okay. demand. I, I like the model, which doesn't seem to be discussed a lot, is mixed income developments. Because either right. we have very <clears throat> high end with inclusionary or we have 100% affordable, but where's the mixed income that like we that's, used to have? Judy, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, Why did the community development department propose that? Well, because I think apparently it's not very financially feasible anymore. I don't, I don't agree I don't with know. that. All right, well, I really don't. We'll so, end with that. You're right. Uh, zoning adjustments can make <laughs> it so. So, Anyway, we'll see you soon. Next week. On, uh, next week? Yes, next week on yeah, Cambridge Inside Out. Bye.